In this video, I want to take a look at a game which I played uh, today, and it is very interesting because, well, this individual is one of the most um, inconsistent players that I've ever met, and by that I mean that some games he plays relatively well, in fact, much better than uh, his rating would suggest and uh, sometimes he just falls apart like completely and just like in this game just drops everything and well as you will see in future um, games he actually plays uh, pretty well. You would think that it is a different person uh, than the one of the game I'm about to show you. And the last time we played, he actually played uh, pretty well. I thought he'd improved a lot. So going into this game, I was, I wouldn't say I was concerned, but I was uh, more cautious in my approach and uh, at one point I spent like two minutes in one move because well I thought it was an interesting move and I wasn't sure how to clearly refute the move so with that being said the game transposed into a Sicilian here I played bishop c5 which is a position that I've had against him a few times and here he played this move e5 and this is where it took about two minutes and it's a casual game so it's not like I'm gonna be spending 10 minutes on a move but at the same time The move, in, at least um, during the game, it wasn't clear how to refute this move. And while there are some ideas, yes, the move does violate the principle that you shouldn't move pawns at the beginning of the game unless it's necessary to bring out your pieces. But this pawn is controlling the f6 square, which is the best square for the knight and it is also controlling the d6 square which is potentially a very good outpost for one of white's pieces that being said other moves here for white usually allow for this move queen to b6 to be a rather strong move and I didn't quite see how e5 would affect the position in such a way that queen b6 wouldn't be a strong move, which is what I play. And it turns out that queen b6 actually is the best move. Now just to show again what potentially could happen if a white piece lands on the d6 square, I'm just going to show this variation, which is um, for illustration purposes only. Uh, these are definitely not the best moves for black. So after queen c7, hitting the pawn, something like f4, knight e7, now you have this knight b5 idea, hitting the queen, so let's say queen c6, and now knight check. Now, the knight is very strong here. Obviously, the bishop can just take it. So this idea would be stronger if the bishop either was no longer on the board or came off this diagonal. So let's say the bishop retreated to b6. Then this knight would be just a monster. After queen b6, my opponent just started blundering everything. So knight c3, so 
I move that I found, um, well, this variation I found with the engine. Um, C3 is a very normal idea. I've seen it against um, many different opponents when I play online. So let's say knight c6. There's this engine move knight d2, and you think, well, isn't black just winning a pawn? Black is winning a pawn if you go uh, uh, taking on e5. But if you take the knight on d4, there is this uh, intermezzo knight c4 hitting the queen. Let's say queen c6. Now you take hitting the bishop, also defending the pawn, and well, what do you do with black? If you check, that's not really helping. Let's say you trade, and well, you can't take the knight, obviously, because it is defended by the bishop. A rook is probably going to end up on c1, so if you continue development, knight check, and even the material is equal look at the evaluation almost plus four for white i mean this position is just crushing for white because again this knight is very strong a knight on the sixth rank for white or the third rank for black uh, that's an outpost you know a knight defended by a pawn this is just like a dream position for white because it's not only restricting this pawn from moving it's also restricting this bishop from moving and how are the rooks getting into the game now that the king has to go probably to f8 there's just no time there's no space for the black pieces So that's why back on move 5 I spent uh, 2 minutes thinking about this move because again I was wondering what could happen if this uh, knight landed on the d6 square after queen b6 my opponent just started blundering everything so he took the knight and now well this this is a very simple tactic. Um, just remove the defender of the bishop. So check. You have to take it. And I just win the bishop. Now, I could stop analyzing here. So I'm just going to show the rest of the game without much commentary. Check. Bishop moves. Check. Goes back. Check. And now my opponent probably should have gone with the bishop instead he went with the queen and that hangs the rook and that here well just trade and well here my opponent resigned because i'm up too much material anyway uh if you like the video uh do give the video a thumbs up and uh share and subscribe if you haven't already and i will see you in the next video